Hey everybody, Retro Pie Guy here. Today I'm going to show you guys how to adjust your settings to better your performance with PlayStation 2 games on Botticera. So let's jump into it. Alright, so we just booted up Botticera. We're going to jump into our PlayStation 2 collections. You can see I have all of my titles added in here, and the majority of these actually uh, scrape really nicely. So be sure to connect to Wi-Fi, scrape everything so you get your video previews, box art, descriptions, logos, ratings, all that good stuff into your particular build because everything just looks way more polished off like that. Um, so what I want to show you guys is the settings. So we are going to actually make changes to our settings specific to each title. So I don't recommend going and setting up like a blanket um, setting for your entire PlayStation 2 collection because all of your games are going to have different performance levels. Not everything is going to have the same struggles. Not everything is going to um, be perfect all of the time. It just varies game by game. Some games are really easy to emulate. Some are much more challenging. So you want to test out all of your games and I recommend testing them out um, with the stock settings, which is just everything set to auto. But I do want to show you how to access your game settings. So we're going to jump into Tekken 5 here. And if we hit our X button on our controller, one time it's going to actually load up the game. If we hold down our X button for like two seconds, though, it's going to pull up this little menu right here. And you can see at the top it has our Tekken 5 logo on it. If you haven't scraped, then it's not going to have the logo, but it will say, you know, Tekken 5. It'll just have a text title for this particular menu and that just means that you're adjusting now your settings or accessing at this point your settings for a specific title not a blanket setting for all of your playstation 2 emulation settings so we're going to drop down under options to advanced game options we'll select it with x and here you can see all of the different settings that we can adjust. So everything here is set to auto except for graphics backend, but that's actually the same as having it on auto because OpenGL is the first option there. So we have game ratio. If we wanna go in here and change your aspect ratio, I leave it on auto because I'm playing on a modern day TV. 16.9 aspect ratio, that's auto here. Um, but if you wanted to go in here and let's say you were playing on like an arcade one-up mod, which is going to be a 4-3 aspect ratio, then you can go up and uh, manually change your aspect ratio to 4-3, which is going to give you that squared off, boxed off sort of um, aspect ratio. You're going to end up with uh, open bezels on each side of your picture. So most of us are going to be leaving this on auto. Um, next thing down is video mode, and you can go in here, make adjustments according to your experience on your game. This is where you want to test everything out, though. If it's not giving you any issues and you're happy with how everything looks, you're going to leave this on auto. You're not going to go in here and start trying to make adjustments if you find that your game is performing extremely well. It just doesn't make sense to try to fix something that isn't broken. Um, so I'm going to back out, but that's certainly an option. You can go in there and tweak it if you really want to or if you feel you need to do so to better your experience. Um, graphics backend, there's two options here. There's OpenGL, there's software. I find that OpenGL works much better. In fact, um, it's pretty much, I haven't found anything so far in my experience here in PlayStation 2 where OpenGL causes any sort of issues. I just think that's the better graphics backend here across the board so far in my experience. There may be some where it's not the uh, best option to choose, but I haven't come across any in my experience just yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out. Um, next thing is show BIOS boot logo. This is just showing you the PlayStation 2 logo as you load into a game, very much like you would on an original PS2 console. When you first loaded a game in, it would come across the screen and give you a little animation of the PS2 logo. I leave it on there. If you disable it and turn it off, um, actually it is set to off here. I think I just did that though. Um, it, you'll just have a blank black screen in its place. So might as well just leave it enabled there. I personally think it's like a little throwback experience to you know, playing a game on the original system. So um, next option is video resolution. So if we go in here, we can change and or override our video resolution. So if you're into a game and you're running into an issue where picture quality is poor, you can try to beef it up a little bit. You could try to kick it up to, you know, 2K, 3K, 4K. Obviously make sure that whatever you're using Botticera on can accommodate these settings. If you don't have those capabilities, then, you know, it's not going to actually make any changes for you. 
Um, if you have an issue where a game is lagging or giving you trouble, then you may want to downgrade. You may want to, let's say that you have it on 3x 1080p, you're lagging out, you're having a lot of issues, you may want to try 720p. Very rarely does this happen, but it really depends on your particular setup and what you're using to emulate and run Botticera on. So just everybody's gonna have different experiences based on the specifics of their actual setup. I'm using the HP Pavilion Gaming PC here with a NVIDIA card. I'm running it on auto. It's running extremely well for probably 99% of my games here. So uh, for me, I don't really have to worry about any of this stuff, but depending on what you're using, you may have to make adjustments here. So I'm gonna leave it on auto here. And next thing is anisotropic filtering. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. And right below it, it says enhance the quality with on perspective textures. So if we go in here, there's a couple settings here, 2x, 4x, 8x, 16x. I'm going to leave mine on auto. I find that I've never actually had to go in here and make any use of this setting, but you may have to do so on your end. It just depends. Good to know where it is though in the uh, event that you need to use it. Next option here is skip draw hack. Right below it, it says skip frames to improve performance. This is what you want to use if you're running into framing issues. If you're running into issues where things are um, just giving you a hard time. They're not running smooth. You may run into flickering, screen flickering and stuff like that or lags as a result of this. So you may have to go in here and make adjustments. There's the options of one through five and they're just different um, you know, levels where you can change your frames. Typically, I leave it on like one, two or three, um, but everybody's different and it's not gonna be one of those cases where you know, I could just tell you that on this specific title, you're going to use it on three. It's going to vary on your specific setup. So it's going to really have to do with what you're running Botticera on. So it's one of those things you just have to test it out. If you jump it on two and you find that, hey, it got a little bit better, but I need to go to three, then come back out, switch it to three, test it again. It's just trial and error. Unfortunately, that's the... Uh, Thing with emulation you just have to test everything out because not everybody's using this with the exact same computer and um you know just set up in general so uh it's not like retro pi if we're using retro pi on raspberry pi 4 4 gigabyte ram for example everybody's using the exact same computer board the same way then we can kind of say exactly what you need to do but with botticera people are using a wide range of different computers so it is going to vary the results considerably. So I'm going to back out here, just leaving that on auto. Next thing is a line sprite hack in parentheses. This removes lines in internal resolution. And it says Soul Calibur in parentheses because actually Soul Calibur is a game where we use this a whole lot. And I'm going to show you guys this one um, in depth because there's a lot of titles you actually have to go ahead and switch this on. It's just a simple on or off here. Auto is going to be off by default. But we do use that in a lot of titles and actually in Tekken 5 specifically. But I want to leave it off first to show you guys what this actually looks like. And then I'll show you guys exactly how we change it and what it does. Um, we're going to continue on with the settings though. So here is VSync. This fixes heavy screen tearing in games. Pretty self-explanatory there. If you're experiencing screen tearing, you want to go in here and just turn it on. Simple on or off. You don't have to worry about uh, number settings or, you know, varying whether one works or whether you need to adjust it again. It's just simple on or off here. So if you're jumping into a game right off the bat, you're going to find out, all right, I have considerable screen tearing in this game. Come back out here, go to VSync and turn it on. Again, it's on off by default. So make sure you turn it on if you're dealing with screen tearing. Next thing is game cheats. I personally don't do anything with game cheats, so this is not something that I have ever used personally, but either turn it on or off if you want to use it. Um, next thing is widescreen patches. This one, you have to be in 16.9 aspect ratio and have your bezels disabled to use it. I've never actually had to use this one, but if you need it, it's here for you. Just a simple on and off again here for widescreen patches. Next thing is automatic game fixes. I do use this one a little bit for certain titles. Typically it's gonna be your more advanced games for this particular collection. Ones that are giving you a hard time, giving you um, you know, flickering, again, lags, stuff like that. Or you're running into specific scenes in a game. 
where it's giving you some problems. All you have to do here is select it, turn it on. No you know, settings that you need to kind of do trial and error with here. It's just a simple on or off and it's gonna do everything automatically. And the next one is manual game fixes. This one is not automatic as you can tell from the title here. Um, and this one it does give you a little warning underneath. It says they can cause compatibility or performance issues. So this one, you're gonna open it up. It actually gives you a list of available manual game fixes. And you can see here, they're going to have the title of the game that they pertain to. So um, here it says Scarface, the world is yours. It's actually one of my favorite games. I actually played it more on Xbox than on PlayStation 2, but this will give you fixes for this specific title. So we're not going to obviously enable this particular manual game fix for Tekken 5 because it's not the correct title. We would have to go into Scarface, the world is yours. I don't actually think I even have that game on my PlayStation 2 collection. I have it on the Xbox side of things here on my Botticera build, but if I did have it here, I was having issues with it. I would just go in here, select it like so. It's gonna populate in under manual game fixes. And then I just go down to the next option or back out. Since I'm not in that title, I'm going to just go back up here to auto, which is off by default and leave it alone. But if you do have an issue with the game, it doesn't hurt to go in here, check your list, see if it happens to be on here. You can see scrolling down, not a whole lot of games in this particular manual game fix list, but sometimes you get lucky and you're able to find exactly what you're looking for. So I'm gonna back out again. Last option here is multi-tap. This isn't one that I've ever used personally, but it allows five or eight max player support in games. Just go in here and you're going to select your port, either port one, port two, port one plus two. And um, it's going to be specific to each game and how many players are um, available for that specific title. So backing out again, that's all of our options. So we're in Tekken 5 here. I want to show you guys this um, Align Sprite hack here. So I'm going to actually back out. I'm going to load in this game with the default settings, show you exactly what these lines and the internal resolution look like on here so you can identify when you need to actually go in and make those changes to your titles that have this issue. Uh, present on them. So we're gonna load it in Tekken 5. All right, so you can see lines present already on screen. The King of Iron Fist Tournament Raven. Code name on a... Get ready for the next battle. Lines are still present and they're gonna stay present here throughout gameplay. Round one. Fight. Six. All right, so performance is great. There's no lags, delays, or of any kind, but we do have those vertical lines there. There's about six, seven, eight of them. I don't know, I didn't count. Uh, but they're present throughout the entire experience here once the game's loaded in. And I find that they're actually there on all of our fighting games. So all the Tekken games have them. So the easy way to fix this is hold down X, jump into advanced game options, drop down to um, a line sprite hack, just turn it on, back out, reload your game. The King of Iron Fit Raven. All right, so you can see- Get no ready for here. the next battle. Round one, fight. So that makes all the difference in the world, just having super smooth performance and not having any visual issues with those lines present on the screen. It's just really annoying to have those there. So it's an easy fix that you can go ahead and make for any titles where you notice those vertical lines present on screen. So that's the majority of these settings here. We walk through each of them. And unfortunately, like I said multiple times in this video, you do have to go into your individual titles, test out your performance and make adjustments according to what you're experiencing on that specific title. 
All right, so as you can see from this video, it's not always super straightforward in terms of jumping into your PlayStation 2 games and figuring out exactly what needs to be changed to better your performance, but hopefully this video made it a little bit easier for you to at least give you some understanding as to where your best approach may lie depending on what issue you're actually experiencing. But if you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to hit me up in the comment section below. I'm always happy to help you guys out any way that I possibly can. So if you found this video helpful today, please smash the like button for me. It's a huge help here on YouTube. Also hit that subscribe button if you want to stay in the loop for all future videos here on the RetroPie Guy YouTube channel. I put out a lot of content based around emulation and specifically I do focus a lot on Bodicera on here as well. So definitely subscribe to stay in the loop. That's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching.